probably a longer wire from past to future. If you look at some of the models that people like Stephen Hawking have suggested for time, then you find something which is actually much closer to that primitive apprehension of how time is structured than to our rather simplistic and fatalistic idea of past, present and future. I believe that Hawking talks about space-time as a kind of a gigantic starry football, a rugby ball, if you like. And at one end of it, you have the Big Bang. And at the other end of it, everything comes together again in a big crunch. But that the whole football exists all the time that there is this gigantic hyper moment in which everything is occurring. That would mean that it was only our conscious minds that were ordering things into past, present and future. The idea of solid flying saucers from Alpha Centauri coming and visiting us now or any time in the past, this is not a rational idea. Um, and yet, because it involves um, machinery, um, warp thrust engines or pseudo-scientific concepts like that then we in the West will actually pay it serious attention as we probably did with Von Däniken whereas spiritual ideas from other cultures we will regard them as well they're complete nonsense, they're not scientific this is an example of the limitations of Western thought that uh, we believe that we understand the entire cosmos but actually we understand the insides of our heads and even then only very poorly was it Niels Bohr the physicist who in his Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics said that when we talk about or describe um, remote events, whether that be in the furthest stars or in the smallest and most remote quanta, that all we can ever truly be doing is talking about ourselves and our own processes. That all we see is our perceptions. We mistake that for reality. And consequently, we tend to be very chauvinistic about um, our picture of reality, as if that were the only one. Then the only way that we can look at other cultures is to imagine that they are deluded, or primitive, or just haven't got it yet. That is a way in which we in terms of information, we isolate ourselves terribly. It's uh, our culture kind of uh, insisting upon its own values, blinds itself to what might actually be very useful concepts and ideas belonging to other more deeply rooted cultures. They offered perhaps richer readings of the world than cold behavioralist science does. Science cannot talk about consciousness because science is a thing that deals entirely with empirical evidence, with things that can be repeated in a laboratory, and thoughts do not come into this category. Therefore, science generally tends to try to disprove the existence of consciousness. They will say that consciousness is some accident of biology, which is itself based upon chemistry, which is itself based upon physics, and wholly explicable within a normal, rational, scientific framework. Rupert Sheldrake, who is a kind of heretical scientist, who put forward the theory of a morphogenetic field in order to try and understand some of the spookier effects of consciousness. 
I'm probably simplifying it horribly here, but I think that the basic concept was that once a form has occurred, whether that be a physical form or an idea form, then it is much more likely and possible for it to occur again. Now, Sheldrake says that this is because there is a kind of what he calls a morphogenetic field, linking everything. And that once the idea existed, then it somehow existed in this morphogenetic field. It struck me that this might explain a lot of things about um, the way the human mind works. Even things, say, for example, like the fact that uh, the steam engine seems to have been invented by five or six different people at approximately the same time. After hundreds, thousands of years of the steam engine not being invented, all of a sudden, within a matter of a couple of weeks, everybody is, you know, it's steam engine time. Everybody is coming up with an idea of steam propulsion. I mean, this is similar to the idea that I put forward of idea space, a kind of a space in which mental events can be said to occur, an idea space which is perhaps universal. Our individual consciousnesses have access to this vast universal space just as we have individual houses, but the street outside the front door belongs to everybody. It's almost as if ideas are pre-existing forms within this space. As human beings, we inhabit two distinct and separate worlds, two landscapes. We inhabit the physical world. But at the same time, since we can only ever truly experience our perception of that world, then it would seem that we more truly inhabit a world purely of consciousness and ideas. It strikes me that the land masses that might exist in this mind space would be composed entirely of ideas, of concepts. That instead of continents or islands you might have large belief systems or philosophies. Marxism might be an island. Uh, Judeo-Christian religions might make up another landmass or continent. Human minds interact, albeit weakly, in limited ways with idea space every moment of the day just in order to carry out our daily lives if you want truly unique ideas uh, if you're an artist or an inventor or somebody who deals in unique and fresh ideas then you will have to plunge right into the undergrowth into the depths of idea space in order to find those ideas that have never been spotted before if we assume that idea space or something like it exists, then we may decide that we wish to explore that space, whether for artistic reasons, perhaps for scientific reasons, or perhaps as magicians, as occultists. Now, if we're going to venture into this hypothetical and more or less entirely unknown territory, it would seem to only make sense that we should try and track down route maps that may have been made by previous explorers. Now when you're talking about the territory of the mind and perhaps the spirit, the only route maps available are magic systems from antiquity. You're talking about systems like the Kabbalah with its map of every conceivable human state. You're talking about systems like tarot, a pantheon of archetypes.